Oh. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 24 of Exploring Genuine Transformation. Hopefully this is working. I'm gonna move forward as though it is. Um, Drew Tupper, I'm here with Drew Tupper and we have had several technology struggles. This show was supposed to happen last week and we weren't able to get live. So, um, but we still were really excited about doing this interview. And so we are doing it now. So if anybody is watching and can tell us that um, you can hear us, that would be amazing. Um, so for those of you who have not seen this show before, uh, my name is Lori Beth, and this is a show where I interview all different coaches, healers, and thought leaders in the realm of transformation on a range of topics. Today, we're gonna to be talking about parenting um, and I have interviewed people on relationship and, um, uh, having more freedom and more intimacy in your life. Um, and the, the premise of the show is that this is transformation for the sake of having more of yourself and having better relationships and really being able to engage in this life rather than getting what you want, uh, which might be a natural byproduct of, um, of the first thing that I said. So I think we are live, but I can still can't really tell. Um, interesting. Um, I'm just mine says, up. mine says live on Facebook. Yeah. I'm just looking at my, I'm looking on my phone to see if we are live. Oh yes, okay. we are live. Wonderful. And there's three people watching. Great. <laughs> Say hi, right. if you're watching. Um, we'd love to know that you're here. Okay, wonderful. So um, we're gonna move forward with the interview and thank you for being here, Drew. Um, thank you for having me. <laughs> um, so the title of today's episode is Parenting as a Path to Personal Growth. And I'm really excited to be interviewing Drew Tupper. For those of you who don't know him, he is a parenting coach and he really came to this, he's been an educator, but um, for many years, I think, right? Mm -hmm. um, but really came to this work of parenting through his own direct, ex direct experience of being a parent and seeing his own limitations and his own blocks and the um, things that were coming up in his parenting. And so, uh, <clears throat> and then being able to shift those and find ways to relate better to his children and relate better to himself. And one thing that I love about this particular topic that we're gonna be exploring is that, you know, we often talk about, let's say like intimate relationships as a path to personal growth or spiritual awakening. Um, and, but parenting can be just the same relationship if not more um, that can superpower, you know, it, it's, it's a spiritual practice that's not, not on the cushion that's in the, the grit of life, um, similar to intimate relationship, but that same kind of closeness can happen between you and your children. So um, I also am personally excited to be exploring this because <clears throat> I've had a career as a child therapist for <clears throat> 10 years and I've worked with many parents. And so it's really the work that Drew is doing is really exciting to me and the way he's kind of taken it on. Um, and I'm sure that we'll have a, a juicy, interesting conversation together. So is, <laughs> that's right. Um, so is there anything that you wanna add uh, as we move forward just about your, <clears throat> you know, who you are and either the kind of work that you offer and um, I know that we'll get into kind of what your personal path has been to get here mm -hmm. um, as we go along. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for <clears throat> holding space for this conversation. And uh, I appreciate you and what you're doing. Mm. Uh, having these conversations and making them available and accessible to everyone. Uh, transformation is um, it's a worthy endeavor. And I, and I, 
I like how you're making it accessible for everyone. So thank you for that. Uh, in your introduction there, what, what caught my interest was that um, you mentioned uh, intimate relationships and how intimate relationships can be a, a path uh, for personal growth and transformation. <clears throat> and that so can parenting. And even more so, perhaps, I noticed you saying that. And I can attest to, I can attest to that because I was married to my wife or let's see, together with my wife for seven or eight years before we had kids. Mm -hmm. And nothing rocked my world more than having kids. My wife and I, and before she was my wife, you know, my fiance and my girlfriend, you know, we all had, we all, it makes it sound like I had different wives and different, <laughs> different fiancés and girlfriends, just one. Um, but we had challenges throughout all of that. But nothing like having kids, not for me. And there's a lot of people I, I've, I've spoken to who tell me that there's nothing quite like the intensity and the investment we have around kids and raising kids. And there's nothing quite like being triggered um, by a child. There's something there. There's, there's a way that kids can, can push our buttons almost like no one else can. And so you mentioned that this is, uh, for me, a, a direct experience, a lived experience, and it definitely was and is mm -hmm. and it's because i was forced with that reality of like oh my gosh what is this what i have never been so off center i have never been so so bothered so anxious so triggered and uh i was <laughs> i was essentially you know forced into this path. I, I, I didn't really have a choice, especially if I wanted to show up in the best of ways uh, for my kids. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you want to say, I, I love that. I mean, everything that you're sharing and also for you personally, right, that the, the struggles that you had in your relationship previous to having kids were nothing compared to what it was like as a parent um, yeah. when you became a parent. And can you share a little bit more about what some of those struggles were and then what you kind of realized through that process? Yeah, sure. With the, with the kids, you mean? Yeah, with your children. Yeah. 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 Well, um, you know, it's interesting because I suppose there's always this idea of like if you're with someone and you're in a, a relationship, an intimate relationship, even a marriage, there's the opportunity, there's the option to check out at some point and say, listen, this is not really working for me. Uh, let's go our separate ways. But the very fact <laughs> that you, you can't do that with kids, it's, it's this pressure cooker mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, they're not going anywhere and the responsibility is on me to show up and be the leader. There was, there was no, I just, I just want to reiterate how, um, you know, intense and important this was for me. And so I don't want to diminish the challenge that people have in relationships and, mm -hmm. and intimate relationships. And I certainly have had uh, my fair share of challenges, but as far as parenting goes, I suppose the idea was this. I really wanted to be a good dad. I really wanted to be a good parent. I, I had thought about it before. Um, and it was something that I wanted to be really intentional about. I felt, I felt like a weight of importance you know, in having children and in, in, in raising them and helping them grow up. And so I, I even felt this a little bit before having kids. 
you know, I wasn't so young. I think we were, you know, 30 and mm, 33 when we had kids. So I had had time to think about this. And so I had great hope. I, I was so hopeful. And so I was excited. I, I really wanted to be a dad and do a good job. And here's where it all came crashing down. Uh, I wasn't. I, I wasn't a good dad. I was like fairly mediocre, mm -hmm. right? Like objectively, you know, I, I don't want to be too hard on myself. And other people would have said, you're doing a good job. And we, you know, we do have to give people some leeway, especially when they have young kids, because it's so hard with young kids, especially being a first time parent. So I, want, I don't want to be too judgmental of anybody or, or of myself. But like in that moment, I really felt like my, the image of what I want to do and the reality of what is happening, it's not matching. I am not being um, calm, consistent. I'm not being loving to the degree that, it, that I wanted to be loving. I was short tempered. I was um, irritated. I was resentful and uh, I had not prepared for this. Mm -hmm. This was not, this is not the image mm -hmm. that I had. And I, and the kicker is this, the, the kind of punch in the stomach was, is this, is that that started to affect my relationship with my kids. Mm. And invariably it started to affect them developmentally. So it was hard to take. Um, can, you, can you say a little bit about how that, the resentment would come out or how, you know, yeah. specifically? Yeah, well, that, okay, no. yeah, that's a good question. Thank you, yeah, uh, the resentment's a big one. The, the resentment is, it's tough. Um, you said you've also experienced anger towards your kids or yeah, frustration, yes. you know, whatever range of emotions, like what, how, what's, what are some examples of how that yeah. would come out? Yeah. Um, I think it's also just good to normalize this for parents. Uh, it absolutely is. And, and when I speak honestly like this, sometimes people are a little bit shocked that I, you know, I could share mm -hmm. what, what I did and who I used to be, but I don't, I, I do it so that other people can see me and hear me and relate to me mm -hmm. and understand that there's a way through this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know, because I came from uh, an educated background with fairly decent parents, mm -hmm. like good parents, if you compare them to the parents at the time. And so if I'm coming from this place and I'm angry and short tempered and resentful, and if I'm out of control and if I'm un unregulated, mm -hmm. then uh, this must be happening with other people. I didn't know it at the time. I thought it was just me. Mm -hmm. um, but so here's some examples like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a little bit sad to think about and go back to those, that time and those places. But I have a, a firstborn son and there, there was something about that interaction with it being a boy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think I projected onto him more than I would if it was a girl um, and I expected more from him and I, um, I, I leaned on him harder and it came out in ways of, uh, you know, yelling at him, uh, and, and not like, not your odd, not your odd, like yell across the room but really frustrated short tempered exhausted overwhelmed out of control kind of yelling is everything okay um let's keep going something can't um, i can't tell but you can't let's tell keep well let's keep going yeah yeah mm -hmm. um to the point where after I was like, after I was done, you know, with my, having a fit, having, um, being triggered and, and losing my cool, so to speak, 
that I would reflect on it after that. And I would, I would clearly understand that that's not okay. Mm -hmm. That level of upset, that level of intensity, that level of, of emotion is not okay to bring into the room with a two-year-old. I remember, I can't remember if it was my son or my daughter. I think it was my son. It must have been because by the time my daughter was around, I had, uh, you know, uh, figure some things out. But I remember not being okay with crying. Like I couldn't stand crying and I just wanted it to stop. Whatever I could do to get it to stop. Um, you know, I understand now why I was not okay with crying. I wasn't okay with sadness. I wasn't okay with my own sadness. I didn't like this young child reminding me of the sadness that I once had. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know how to deal with back then. I still don't know how to deal with it. So it was very overwhelming for me. And so I would do anything to make it stop from like, you know, sometimes bribing with food or, you know, um, whatever you could do, turning music on, like putting it, putting the iPad on. But there were times too, when I would just go too far and lose it and just kind of snap. And I remember picking up him up. And like he's two, right? So I'm like right here and face to face and screaming at him at least once, probably several times, calm down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I look back on it now and I'm like, how is that, how is that gonna make him feel safe? Mm -hmm. How is that going to help him calm down? Mm -hmm. It's not, it's not going to make him feel safe. Then it's not going to make him feel safe in general. And um, yeah. so, yeah, well, you're, it's interesting because you're, I mean, in all of what you shared right there, you're talking about some of the fundamentals in my opinion of sort of the, um, what gets triggered in parents when they have kids, you know, those sort of psychodynamics, I would call yeah. it psychologically, like their kind of inner world, which is, which is one, um, I think you're really speaking to this, um, that any, any emotion or anything that is unprocessed in the parent that there are, is being mirrored in the child mm -hmm. or through the child is going to come through, right. Mm -hmm. It's going to, um, yeah. that's going to, that's going to be really hard to deal with. Right. So if you haven't dealt with your own sadness, then you're going to have yeah. a hard time dealing with that. And then the other thing that I think you keep naming, which is so important is, having learning to have a regulated nervous system as a parent because then all of your actions and your choices can come from like how can you expect your child to be regulated if you don't know how to regulate yourself right mm -hmm. so yeah. to me those are sort of the core you know I, the core of at least what you know i know can be so healing for parents in the in the work that i've done as well mm -hmm. um and it's yeah so i mean i think you just really powerfully spoke to that and that that was sort of the early time for you as a parent and mm -hmm. i appreciate your vulnerability and your transparency i think it's super important you know for parents to hear that oh yeah these things are really normal like this is exactly what happens yeah. you can't you can't prepare to have children like you have to unless you've done i mean you know you can yeah. do a lot of personal work beforehand but there's prop there's really no preparation for it yeah uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I, I wouldn't have considered myself to be um, checked out or asleep before I had kids. I was, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I had been involved in personal development and there's just something, something special about having children mm -hmm. that show you the places where you're still hurting mm -hmm. um, like nobody else can. Mm -hmm. And in a way it became this gift, this gift where I could heal at a level that I'd never had before. And it showed me, like you said, it showed me where I had unprocessed uh, feelings and um, where I was stuck, mm -hmm. stuck in pain. And um, so mm -hmm. it, it was hard, like, you know, from, you know, zero, zero to one wasn't so hard because you have a baby. 
and babies don't have much autonomy or much will. They do cry a lot. And I didn't like that. Like I said, I didn't like the crying. But then another problem for me was when this little being started uh, deciding that he wanted to do things on his own and to exert his own will. And um, I didn't, I didn't so much like that, especially if it clashed with what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I, I could definitely get triggered in a moment and feel what I thought was this like really mm -hmm. big message of disrespect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that, uh, what I love about that example too, is that, um, that's really about separation, individuation, right? Like that your child, and this is why I think, this is why I think parenting is, can be such a beautiful path to personal growth because, and maybe this is why, for, you know, for you or for others, it maybe it can be more intense than romantic relationship because it's your child is sort of potentially a narcissistic extension of you. Like it's the closest, right? Like, <laughs> Oh yeah. God, like whatever you haven't healed in yourself related to your own sense of worth and, you know, value and like, oh, how do I, um, I, I think people under, I don't know if people understand my, the use of that word, it's a psychological term, but, um, you know, that, that they're an, ex I think it's very easy to feel like, oh, my children are extension of me. If they show up in this way, then that is a, that's a reflection uh, of who I am rather than actually seeing them as a separate person. Yeah. Which obviously is a huge part of personal growth yeah. work, right? For for all of us, <laughs> you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's the work mm -hmm. we're forever doing. How do I show up as me? Um, yeah, and you know, not not be sort of looking at the world through <clears throat> a lens of you know how I'm being perceived, basically, or yeah. how I'm how I think I'm supposed to be. Um, I have to, yeah, I have to admit that I. I, um, I was too close. Like I was, um, identifying too much with my child. Like I, we, it was, mm -hmm. I, I didn't, I didn't have enough separation. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's, that's a problem. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Um, because then everything becomes a bit more intense and, uh, I took things a lot more personally than I needed to. And so part of my journey actually was, as you mentioned, separating from my son and letting him be him and accepting him for who he was, not even accepting him, but like um, encouraging him and honoring him and valuing him for who he is and celebrating that. Um, it's not possible when, when you're playing this game of you're an extension of me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that was some really big medicine for me mm -hmm. because at the beginning it hurt. It felt like it felt unloving to separate myself from my child and to take space and to like find myself and let him be him. It felt, it felt a little bit unnatural, but um, you know, it was a little bit of a process that I had to go through that hurt a little bit, but, but ultimately led me to a place of, being able to accept him for who he was and be excited about him and his life. And so he taught me that lesson. So now with my wife, our relationship is way healthier and mature, more mature because of that. Now I'm in a place in my intimate relationship with my wife where I'm excited for her and who she is. And I'm just like jazz about her and I want to support her. And I don't need her to be like me for me to be okay. Mm -hmm. I don't need, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't need to box her in. I don't need, I don't need that. And it's so freeing. Mm -hmm. It feels really mature. It feels really good. It feels super healthy and I love it. And I'm so glad and here's the thing. I'm so glad that he was so strong in who he was and, you know, stood up to me and stood his ground at the age of like two and three in order for me to eventually come around to learning these lessons that he ultimately taught me. Mm. That's wonderful. 
So we've been talking, I, I, I think it's really great, you know, for people to hear the truth of what it was like for you. And so we've been talking about what you were struggling with. I would love for you now to talk about kind of what transformed for you and how you, yeah, how you kind of made it through that and, and what is on the other side. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, there's two big things that I had to look at. And one was self-awareness and the management of myself. And so I really uh, did not have great self-regulation. I was reactive. Mm -hmm. And like I said, that's the reason why I wasn't being the, the guy, the man, the husband that I wanted to be because my reactions uh, mm -hmm. would take over. And so reactions from a hurt place do not yield good things in parenting or in relationships. They just don't. And so I had to create some, some way that I could insert some space and some, some ability to create what I wanted to create in the moment. I had to do that because my reactions were ruining my life and the lives of the people around me. So I had to find a way to get really present and like authentic, positive and loving in the moment. Cause that's what I wanted to do. That's, that's who I wanted to be really deep down. And so, um, I think a counselor gave me this activity. Um, and I don't even know if he knows how impactful it was, but, um, it's super simple. And I didn't even want to do it when he gave it to me. I'm like, this is stupid. Why do I need to do this? This is not going to get me anything. I want this and you're not helping me. <laughs> so he had me fill out this, this sheet Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, morning, afternoon, and evening. And he said, write down how you're feeling in each of these blocks in the morning, in the afternoon, and do, do it for a week or two. Um, and I'm like, this is useless. I didn't want to do it. And something happened during that, that second week where I became aware of me. I became an observer mm -hmm. of myself. Beautiful. And I gained a level of almost immediately gained a level of self-control that I'd never had in my life mm -hmm. because I was able to, to, to see and feel what I was feeling. And with, with that awareness and with that knowledge, then mm -hmm. automatically came the, the, the next question that I asked myself was like, well, what do you want to do with that? Like, okay, so you're, you're upset right now and you're about to come home after work to your, to your three-year-old and your wife. So what you, you just checked in with yourself. Great. So what, so what do you want to do? Well, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to go home and be angry, but I'm feeling upset. And so it gave me a level of empowerment that I've never had before due to the, due to the awareness. Mm -hmm. And so then the world felt like my oyster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then I could, then I could choose. Mm -hmm. Ah, that's it. It's, I love hearing you talk about this. And what I'm hearing is actually that um, for you, self-regulation came through, through awareness mostly, yeah. you know, versus I think for, for some people, they need kind of deeper help with kind of the somatic part of it or going into the body and sort of being able to control themselves mm -hmm. that way. But it sounds like you actually just, just the self-awareness that you of being able to observe yourself and yeah. see what was happening um, yeah. allowed you to shift that pretty immediately. It was huge. That is huge. It was, huge. <laughs> yeah. it was absolutely huge. Cause I wanted so badly to be a certain way. And I felt really drawn to, um, being a certain way, but I wasn't being that way. And so when I became aware of my own state, I could manage it in a way that allowed me to get to where I wanted to get to. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. I instituted some self-regulation exercises, some breathing and whatnot, you know, that helped me uh -huh. mm -hmm. regulate. Mm -hmm. And so that definitely, it's like a one-two punch, right? Mm -hmm. Awareness plus the management equaled skillful living. 
-hmm. Beautiful. Um, are there any other, um, you know, are there any other things that really transform for you that you want to just kind of bullet and even just say, mm. yeah, other thing. I mean, that's a huge experience, yeah. but I yeah. know that you, I know that you do a lot of other things in your work as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and maybe you just want to also move on to that. Just talking about kind of like yeah. know, the work that you do and mm -hmm. how your own journey kind of has informed that. Well, it's funny is a lot of the work that I do is the work that I did with myself or that I did at that time, mm -hmm. which was like identifying what you want at a deep, like somatic, real visceral level. Like, what do you want? So let's spend some time talking about who you, who you want to be, who, who you really want to show up as. Let's tune into that. Let's get really honest and clear about that. Mm -hmm. And almost always, every i mean like i don't know what the percentage is really high uh every parent that i speak to and almost every person um when you get quiet and the you know someone holds space for you and you get to sink in and really think and feel about who you want to be it's always something good it's always like it always revolves around that same handful of things that everyone else wants to do and be like, I want to be honest. I want to be loving, you know, I want to be, yeah, compassionate. I want to, you know, for, for parents, it's, I want to be a good example for my kids. I want to, uh, I want to feel alive. I want to feel like what I'm doing matters. I want to, I want to help my kids be their best. I want to empower them. And there's not much else like there really isn't. I want to have great relationships with my kids. Uh, I want to have open and trusting relationships with my kids and my spouse. And um, so identifying that and naming that and appreciating it uh, is really important mm -hmm. because a lot of us <laughs> have, been, have been sold a bill of goods that at some level we believe to be true, which is like, you should, in order to be good or acceptable, you need to have this, you need to do this. You need to be in this place. You need to do this work. You got to look like this. And none of that's real. None of the shoulds are real. And so dropping into who it is you really want to be and what that looks like mm -hmm. in action is really important. So that's a big part of it. I had to, I, I had to get really, and that's going to affect what you do. That's going to affect real life decisions. Like what work you do, how often you work, where you work, um, what kind of neighborhood you live in, what kind of, you know, what kind of neighbors you have, what kind of people you surround yourself with. Uh, they, these, these, um, these true, uh, these true, these truism, these, these things that really resonate with you on a deep level. They matter. And when we can, when we can uh, create lives that reflect those things, then it's like we're off to the races. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so that's the work that I do with, with parents is like, we get really clear on this. And then, um, and then we institute uh, the mindset and skill set shifts in order to create that. Mm -hmm. And I encourage people, I love them mm -hmm. and I hold them accountable to their own vision, their own, their own mission. Mm -hmm. And it's lovely to see someone step into a life that they actually want. And it's bizarre because I don't actually think that when we're young, we're uh, so unfamiliar with this life. We're quite natural in, in being who we want to be but we kind of get led away from that or conditioned away from it. And so it's almost like a relearning or coming back to who you already are or mm -hmm. were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love, um, I love the model that you're working in with parents because you're really focusing on a strength based model. Right. And on like, yeah. okay, it's like, I'm helping you to figure out 
I'm helping you to even know what your vision is and what you want and trusting that it's actually all, all these really beautiful and good things that are going to be supportive to everybody, you know, themselves yeah. and their children and their families. And yet I'm imagining that many people that you work with, it's like maybe they're in the throes of parenting and it's hard. And so they don't even, they like, they're not even allowing themselves to live into a vision that they want. So then what you're saying is like, once they, you support them and really getting clear about what they want, which is another form of awareness, right? Then they're able to, um, then you, then you can like, it's much easier to do the work that to get them there because it's like, okay, this yeah. is where I want to be. So now yeah. what is it that I need to do and how can I get my mind? You know, I mean, it's both the, it's the body as well, but it's also, it's really the mind getting the mind on board. Like, Okay like the power of our consciousness, you know, like yeah. I want this. Okay. So what do I need to do and what's in the way? And so then mm. it, you're working with people and giving them all kinds of great practical skill sets to get there. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's really cool. And <laughs> it's really awesome. It's lovely to watch and to be a part of. And like you were mentioning, getting clear on what really matters to you, what really matters to your family, at a deep soul level mm -hmm. and then even talking about it creating a vision sharing what that looks like living in that world you know even if it's even if it's just during the coaching sessions but like i encourage journaling and and talking with close confidants as well about this this idea and this vision that really means something to you and something really interesting happens when a meaningful vision is spoken out loud and it's put on the table for everyone, you know, for you to see, for you to like pay attention to and conceptualize. There's this, there's this phenomenon that happens where it's, it's like a magnet pulling you toward it. It's, you, you can't help, the more you live in that place and you talk about it and you, and you um, share it, and you allow for it to be possible. It's just like, there's this magnet that pulls you toward it. It's like a, and it, it's like a, a self-directing compass that just like, mm. you know, is like, yeah, you may go off path once in a while, but you keep on coming back to it. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing is, here's the, the lovely thing about the work that I do. The way that I work with people, the coaching model, which is a lot about trusting the individual on the other side um trusting them loving them encouraging them and empowering them to live their own life and trusting that what's inside of them is is their truth and their power and you know i'm going to help you uncover it and i'm going to cheer you on that's mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's my job. Mm -hmm. The cool thing about that, mm -hmm. it's not too different from really heart-centered parenting. Ah, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so a client has an experience with me mm. in this dynamic where I'm, you know, loving the hell out of them. I'm believing in them. I'm encouraging them, empowering them, trusting them. And these wonderful things are happening. And at some point I can draw the analogy or the, the parallel that this is like, this is actually a really great way. A lot of these tools, a lot of the, these ways that you and I are interacting in, in space that I'm holding for you, you know, you can, you can do this for your kids. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I mean, that's, I think some of the most powerful work, um, you know, that we can do as healers is when there's something that happens within the healing or coaching or therapy relationship that, yeah. you know, replicating what people want in their lives. So they get to have like an yeah. experience of that. Yeah. yeah. We, we've been on here for a while. I know we were, we were thinking of only doing 30 minutes. So, um, yeah, I think you just did a really beautiful job there at the end of describing what you do with parents. Yeah, it all up. <laughs> yeah, which is which is wonderful, and I, I'm really glad that we were able to um, talk about your journey and kind of the shift for you. Um, do you? I'd love for you to just let people know how they can follow your work and yeah. um, the you know, kind of 
any programs or offerings that you have right now. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So my name is Drew Tupper, D-R-E-W. This is on your page too. I D-R. Think. Okay. And so you can find me on Facebook. I'm on there. I look like this. <laughs> and um, I have a parenting page and also a dad's group on Facebook. And my, my website is drewtupper.com. And uh, so I do one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm also uh, starting a course in the new year, the third week of January called Calm and Conscious Parenting. Awesome. And so that's a, a, a more accessible version uh, or option to the one-on-one the -on -one coaching. It'll be uh, 10 to 15 people, 12, 12 weeks long, focused on calm and conscious parenting. So if you're interested in that, you can go to my website and check that out. You can message me uh, Great. and just uh, say hello. Yeah, wonderful. And I, I also know, Drew, that you do these kind of short Facebook lives at times that yeah. get to the heart of, you know, parenting concerns and that can be watched pretty quickly. So I would definitely recommend following Drew and seeing some of those. Um, right. Well, yeah, I'm so glad we finally <laughs> were able to do this. Um, Lori, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you everyone for tuning in again. My name is Lori Beth and this is a show that I do weekly. However, I will be taking the next two weeks off over the holidays um of this show and um i uh yeah if you don't know me and my work currently i'm i'm just in the process of launching a program called dark feminine alchemy and i'm working with um female leaders entrepreneurs and coaches to harness their darkness traumas and struggles and transform them into their uh true power joy and success. And so this is a one-on-one -on -one program with a, an optional group call or a couple of group calls every week. Um, and this is, this is a course that's going to superpower your, um, yeah, if you're, if you're a woman who's, who's interested, um, superpower, just your creativity, your inspiration, your embodiment and your expression so that you can, and it will affect every area of your life, but I'm specifically interested in <clears throat> supporting business, money and relationship. So if you're interested in working with me, please reach out to me and thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you after the new year. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Drew. Okay. Thank you. Let's see how I can.